Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Welcome to another episode of Stay Rad Wine Blog TV, and I'm very excited to look at the three wines that I have in front of me. Uh, Craig from Cornerstone Cellars in Napa had sent out to me uh, three samples, uh, uh, a three sample vertical of their Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc. So starting from 2009 to 2010 to 2011. Now, typically when I think about Sauvignon Blanc, I think about the New Zealand style, you know, that uh, very grassy type of style, that very, you know, what someone call that cat pee type of style, um, which I actually enjoy. I mean, who doesn't like a little bit of cat pee, right? Um, but I'm excited to see the, the different take that uh, Cornerstone Cellars does with their Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc. Um, what I have been told is this single vineyard Sauvignon Blanc that they're doing is coming from uh, 20 year old plus uh, Sauvignon Blanc vines that are dry farmed. Um, it's aged in neutral French oak barrels, so it's not gonna be a whole lot of that oak influence, but the idea is that it should be kind of a richer style. So what I wanted to do is just kind of go down the row um, with these Sauvignon Blanc samples, uh, and then later on I'm gonna pair this with some food and see if that works out. My food is in the oven right now, so if all of a sudden we hear beeping and I run out of the room, that's why I gotta make sure that I'm taking care of dinner. So I'm gonna start with 2009 and then work my way up. Um, what we should know is that 2011 is their current release. So I mean, here we are in 2014, notice that Cornerstone is holding on to these Sauvignon Blancs for a while. They're saying that this is a white wine that really does develop good character uh, with age, kind of like yours truly. Um, so, I mean, 2011 is the current vintage, and that goes for $30. Um, they do have just a few left of the 2010, which is $50, and this 2009, which is $70. Oh, man. <laughs> what a treat to jump into this, right? So... You know, color-wise, as I would often expect from Sauvignon Blanc, I mean, we're not getting like super, super yellowish type of colors. Um, what I will say is this almost looks like a, a cloudy type of uh, uh, lemony, golden lemony type of color here. So, I mean, it's, it's nice. And what we do know is with white wines, as they age, they are gonna get darker and darker. So we're gonna expect that um, as we go down the row here, these guys are gonna get lighter and lighter. So notice this kind of, what I would say again, like a cloudy, lemony uh, type of gold in there, right? So on the nose, I am getting some citrus and mineral notes. I am getting, I'm getting a little bit of grassiness that I would expect in a Sauvignon Blanc. I'm not getting any pee, uh, but again, I am getting grassiness. Some good melon fruits, like some cantaloupe there. But like citruses of, of, of definitely like lemon and lime. And just like this nice like crushed rock uh, minerality, right? Wow. And this is, you know, much more of a, a, a richer, more full style of Sauvignon Blanc that, that I'm used to. And honestly, I could say this is the, um, Wow, this is lingering. I mean, it almost almost brings the um, body uh, of a Chardonnay. Uh, it, it is uh, seeming to be just a little bit, a little bit more viscous um, than than your typical. Like sometimes you can think of like a watered down type of Sauvignon Blanc. This is not it. Um, so it is bringing a, a good weight. Like a, a good viscosity and definitely um, this lemony citrus is is coming through. There's a little bit of a creaminess here. So I can see that, you know, when, when Craig says they're bringing a richer style, I definitely see that. And wow, this is, uh, 
Wow, that's nice. That's that's really nice. I'm gonna I'm gonna pound this last little drop there. Oh wow, yeah, that's tasty. Um, I'm gonna give all the scores at the end, but but this is this is really good, right? So let's take a look at the whoa. Sorry guys. So you may have noticed uh, on the last couple of episodes I am using a, a different camera, but I need to get a tripod for it, right? So uh, when we look at the 2010 here, and you're going to notice there's some condensation on here. I did have this uh, in my fridge uh, earlier today. I pulled this out of my fridge about an hour ago um, just to let it let it come a little bit closer to room temperature. Uh, we do like white wines chilled, but not so much so that we can't really taste uh, what's going on. So I mean, it's it's uh, kind of in between fridge temp and uh, room temp right now. So yeah, as expected here, as I look at the 2010, not nearly as cloudy. I see that you guys see kind of like a golden color there, but it's a little bit more clear uh, from my perspective when compared to that last uh, Sauvignon Blanc, the 09. So here's the 2010. And all three of these vintages, by the way, uh, compared to usual, relatively cool vintages in Napa Valley. So um, a longer ripening period with these guys. So we're getting, along with that, that nice big fruit, we're also getting a whole lot of acidity that develops on that vine. Um, on the nose, I'm getting more of like a, a peachy apricot uh, type of play here. Getting like some mangoes. Wow. I'm getting again that lemony, lemon zest type of thing. And, and there is again a little bit of that like crushed rock minerality as well. While I'm sitting here and I'm thinking about the last one and I haven't really um, tasted this one yet. There's this lingering, like, saltiness, salinity um, from that uh, 2009. I mean, it's almost like uh, Albarreño-esque uh, in its salinity there. So, I mean, right off the bat, I'm thinking about seafood, and I think you guys are going to like what I put together, and, and I'll show you some pictures and stuff uh, down below. But, yeah, again, like, peaches, apricots, lemons, good minerality, right? peach flavor on there. Um, wow. Big peach. I am getting, again, some of that creaminess. Again, these are very much like a, a lot richer in style than, than I would ever think of with a uh, typical Sauvignon Blanc. And I'm really liking this a lot. Craig, good job. Um, this is really nice. I think with the 09, when, um, when I was thinking about it, it was a lot more of like these subtle complexities. This stuff is just in your face peaches and, and good uh, citrusy acidity. Yeah, there's just a nice zing there that I really like to this one. Um, and lingering long acid, good creaminess. I am, much like what I was the other day with that Pinot Noir, um, I'm getting like this graphite, like pencil shaving uh, type of thing going on. This is, wow. <laughs> this is going to be tough to have to rank one over the other, but I got to do what I got to do. This is, uh, wow. Wow. Yeah, that's real nice. So. Let's dive into the 2011. This is their current release right here. So again, with the 2011, we're talking about uh, $30. And this one, 
you know, I'll have a link to their website down below. This one, I'm, I'm almost certain you could mail order from them depending on uh, the state that you're in. Or if you're in, you know, Northern California, give them a visit and, uh, and tell Craig that uh, Jeff from StayRadWineBlog.com uh, sent you. So color-wise, yeah, definitely the lightest of the bunch. I'm getting, um, you know, earlier as I was talking about the, the 2009 was, was definitely cloudier. And while I didn't notice it so much in the 2010, um, there was some residual cloudiness with this one right here. I mean, it's, it's fairly clear. You guys can see kind of a golden hue and I, I am getting a little bit of that from my end as well. The sun just blasted through this room. It's okay, huh? I liked it. <laughs> Biggest acidity uh, of the bunch in the 2011 and Dare I say, as we move into this 2011, which I like very much, um, it, this is the one where in a blind tasting, I would say this is the most Sauvignon Blanc-like. I think maybe a lot of it has to do with, you know, I don't drink a lot of five-year-old Sauvignon Blancs. I don't know if I ever have, and so maybe it's as I'm getting closer to a current release and I think about most of the Sauv Blancs that I have are, you know, one to two years old um, as I get to something that is uh, only three years old, maybe that's more of a of a typical type of Sauvignon Blanc thing. Hey, I'm noticing that I need to pull something out of the oven real quick. Just give me a second, all right? I'll be right back. And I'm back. So I just uh, pulled the food out of the oven and a little bit later I'm gonna show you what I'm pairing with these Sauvignon Blancs. This 2011, again, just speaks of a more like typical to me Sauvignon Blanc style. Really good acidity. And, and on the nose, I mean, it's really just straight citrus and minerals, right? I'm not getting uh, there's a little bit of that grassiness there. Um, again, no cat pee on this, just straight grass, which which is fine with me too. I really like those like grass clippings. And and guys, if, if you're not very familiar with Sauvignon Blanc and if you're not familiar with um, what we mean when we talk about grassiness in a wine or even cat pee in a wine, like honestly, spend some time with some grass clippings. Uh, feel free to just shove your face into it, smell it, maybe lick it, not the cat pee, but the, the grass, um, and and I think you'll get more of a sense of, of what I mean, but um, the, like, this is very much clearly like fresh cut grass clippings to me when I smell this. And again, it's probably because it is this younger Sauvignon Blanc. I feel like now I, I feel kind of spoiled, like I want to age more of my Sauvignon Blancs, and definitely these guys are age worthy. Really good acidity on the nose that I'm sensing with those citrus notes, right? And I am getting just a little bit of that peach fruit that I noticed in the 2010. So this is, um, wow. Super straight racing acidity, more than anything else. Lots of lemons, um, lots of lemons, lots of lemons. Really long acid, which I think again, kind of lends itself to, along with there is like this richness in the background that's coming from that neutral oak aging. Um, you know, along with that richness, I think it really does lead to a more complex type of um, Sauvignon Blanc that is very much age worthy. Um, it's exciting, it really is. Um, but I think I've been so spoiled by the by the uh, 09 and the 10 that that I'm kind of 
wow, it's like I want to wait on this for a couple of years. Like I almost feel bad that I opened it up this early. But again, very good and very classic. Like this is, of the three Sauvignon Blancs, this is the one where in a blind tasting I go, oh yeah, this is definitely Sauv Blanc. And I might even say, now I don't think I would say New Zealand, but I mean this is definitely where I would say, hey, New World Sauvignon Blanc here. Yeah, some of that lingering like crushed rock minerality on that as well. Um, but I can see how that complexity really develops um, with that aging. And I think that that maybe if we've learned anything from this vertical here is that, you know, maybe you just tuck your uh, Sauvignon Blancs away and really give it that time to develop because I'm seeing some really awesome stuff happen here. and and. Uh, I want to thank Cornerstone so much for, for giving me this opportunity. I don't think I would have ever been able to do something like that if it wasn't for you guys. So thank you so much. Um, score wise, I got to say that, wow. So with the one that's in my glass, this 2011, the current release right here, I'm giving this a 90. I think this is just varietally correct, um, typical and delicious uh, Napa Valley Sauvignon Blanc. Um, and I'm very happy in giving this a 90. I'm feeling very good about that. Um, as I go back into the 09 and the 10, um, I think we definitely see a difference in, in how these wines have developed. Um, and I think the benefit of the 2009, which I'm going to give a, uh, wow, a 92. The benefit of that 2009 is that it does have that aging to go along with it. But this 2010 is, and I feel so bad that the condensation has kind of almost ruined the label on this one. The 2010, um, this is a killer. This is a this is a 93 for me and it's it's just rock solid. Um you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to go uh, serve myself a plate of food and uh, I'm going to show you how we pair with that. And I, I think you're really going to like it. So, you know, give me a minute and I'll be right back. All right. Hey guys, it's Jeff. So I was uh, just uploading the uh, video that I was doing for the uh, Cornerstone uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Those, uh, three wines in a row and I realized that I accidentally uh, deleted the food and wine pairing segment of uh, that epic episode. So uh, my apologies, everybody. I do have some detailed uh, tasting and, and food pairing notes uh, down below and some pictures of some killer uh, crab macaroni and cheese. Uh, and I'll talk to you about how it went with that wine uh, down below. So please go ahead and read those notes and uh, leave a comment and let let me know what you guys think about uh, Sauvignon Blanc, about aged Sauvignon Blanc, and about macaroni and cheese with uh, King Crab. Till next time, everybody, stay rad.